No, 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 we didn't forget about you. See, still wearing the Christmas hat, and I have your gift right here. It's your holiday tangerine. <laughs> you told me that they like tangerines, GB1. <laughs> well, I didn't just get you your holiday tangerine. I also got you your favorite Star Wars character, Darth Vader. I just have to build it. Hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone. This is my friend, GB1, and uh, that grumpy Gus up there is Godzilla. In this episode, we're going to be building the Metal Earth Premium Series Star Wars Darth Vader. And if you're looking to pick one up yourself, you want to check out GrooveBuilders.ca. We have all kinds of really cool models on there, at great prices with fast shipping to the United States and Canada. On all orders $65 Canadian or $50 US, you get free shipping with code SHIPTHIS, which is a pretty awesome deal. Alright Groovers, now what kind of things do we need to know to build Vader? What are the tricky parts, and what tools do you need to build them? These are some great questions. Let's get down to the workbench and take a look at our package. And there we have it. All 16 pages needed to build Darth Vader. Don't let the number of pages fool you though, there really isn't a whole lot here. The pieces are just really big, and that should be expected on premium series models. Looking at our instructions, the first thing we're going to talk about are the legs and how to get them shaped and connected. Next, we'll look at shaping the helmet and face. Finally, we'll talk about shaping the arms and hands. And then, we'll look at getting Darth Vader's cape just right. This should be a pretty interesting day. Since there's always given tangerines on Christmas, Godzilla, you need to get over this. Now, our instructions look pretty intense, but what tools do we need to build Darth Vader? That's a good question. Let's ask our resident tool expert, Timothy? No one likes tangerines for Christmas. At least building Darth Vader, a true leader, will make this day more bearable. To build Darth Vader, you will need... Nippers, tweezers, coning tools, and dapping punches. Well, for a Dalek that doesn't like tangerines for Christmas, Timothy, you sure did eat yours pretty quickly this morning. Now, these are just our recommendations, and you really don't need anything but nippers and tweezers to get the job done. But of course, having the right tools will make everything a lot easier. Now, we've looked at our instructions, and we have all our tools. When you're ready to build Vader, just press that like button. Well, thank you very much. All right, let's get building. Darth Vader from the Metal Earth Premium Series Star Wars line is a model that shows even with big pieces, you still need to take your time and get it right. The first thing we need to talk about is shaping Darth Vader's feet and legs. Starting with step two, we need to get a nice curve on part three. You can use the border of part three to get a good understanding of how much of a bend we need. When it comes time to secure the tabs on the front, you can hide them or let them be out. I chose to hide mine and it was an absolute struggle, so if you're gonna do that, just be aware. Let's talk about shaping the legs of Darth Vader. Looking at parts 5 and 6, we can see that we need to make a cylinder. Checking to make sure we're gonna shape on the correct side first, I recommend taking your tool and rolling it back and forth. This should bend every part of the metal, making the piece very consistent throughout. It should also be easier to connect the tabs around the back. When it comes time to attach all of our pieces together, start by attaching parts 3 and 4, then wrap around part 5. This will make getting the legs together a lot more simpler than fighting with part 5 after it's already been closed. With both of our legs looking pretty awesome, it's time to put them together. In my original build video, I connected the legs to part 12, then connected them to the base. This way is fine, but Michael brings up a good point. If I was to do this again, I would secure the legs to the base first, then attach them together at the waist. Attaching the legs in this way makes for a way more stable connection and a lot less of a wobbly figure. Once we have our legs attached together and they're on our stand, it's time to move on to our helmet. Now I know this looks intimidating with all the small parts, but don't worry. 
we got this. After getting started on our helmet with step 11, we move on to forming the cheeks with parts 25 and 26. For me, this was the hardest part of the entire build. We start by bending parts 25 and 26 in half. Then we also need to bend the tabs too. The reason for this is we need to get these parts almost perfect in order for them to fit into part 24. You may need to bring the detail up to part 24 and match it a couple of times before you can get it in and secure it correctly. Take your time with this step and be very careful not to accidentally scratch the paint. A sharpie can do wonders, but it's best not to make the mistake to begin with. Once we've matched our cheeks and we get them in place, it's time to secure the tabs with a nice bend. Now we need to move on to shaping the helmet. In step 14, we take part 30, and just like our legs, we roll our part. But this time, we're not looking to make a cylinder, we're looking to make a bullish shape. By rolling my fondant tool just like this, I can get the edges to almost meet together naturally. I really don't like gaps, and I find this method is the best way to avoid getting them when making these kinds of shapes. When all of our edges are together, we can secure the tabs with a flush bend and try our best to hide our larceny with part 31 and 32. Look at our helmet! That detail we've done looks really good. Now we just need a few more things. The third and final thing we need to talk about is shaping the arms, hands, and cape of Darth Vader. Starting with step 19, you will see that the shaping of the arms is similar to shaping of the legs, but with some key differences. The arms of Vader have a unique shape, and trying to form a straight cylinder with them will have the tabs off-center. Make sure to shape this part with the tabs going towards their holes. You may find yourself bending one side of the part a little bit more than the other. That's completely okay, as long as the tabs line up. When shaping part 48 on step 20, it's important to remember that the palm of the hand is bent like a roof, and not like a normal palm. I think they did this to add some thickness to the hand, but to me, it makes the hand look a little bit weird. We can bend the palm a little bit once it's in place, but those little metal tabs by the fingers need to be where they are, otherwise the whole thing just flattens. Yeah, no fun. Once our pieces are shaped, we can connect them together like we did with our legs. Remember, it's always better to wrap the bigger parts around the smaller ones. Lastly, let's look at our cape. Part 56 and 55 look really straightforward, but don't let that fool you. Getting these two parts to look right will take some trial and error. We need to make sure that part 56 sits snugly on Vader's shoulders, with the insertion holes of part 55 facing down. Getting the holes in the right spot here is key to having Vader's cape stay close to the body. If the insertion holes aren't slightly bent down, the cape will stand away from the model, making it look like Vader is almost flying. Trying to shape the cape afterwards could lead to the feet being weakened too, so be very careful when you're going to adjust yours. And I think with that last little adjustment, we're done! Darth Vader from the Metal Earth Premium Series Star Wars line. Awesome! And there we have it, the Metal Alert Premium Series Darth Vader. This build was a lot of fun to complete, and I've been looking forward to this one for quite a long time. If you remember originally when the photos leaked about this model, the head was absolutely huge, and a lot of people were making fun of it. They definitely went back and shrunk it down, and if you ask me, this model looks really good. There are some things wrong with it though. The belt here, the detail is really proportionately way too big for the area. It uh, really does stand out, especially in the crotch here. But outside of those two areas, everything else here on Darth Vader looks pretty good and he feels really solid on his stand. Now, I really can't recommend this for new builders out there. There's a lot of difficult detail that's going to be kind of hard if you've never built a metal model before. But if you have a couple of builds under your belt and you're looking to kind of go the next level, this is a great place to start before you build Deadpool. Because Deadpool was definitely more complex than this guy right here. Alright group builders, that brings us to the end of our show. I had a really good time building Darth Vader with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well, as we have all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future. Want to help the channel grow? Check out GrooveBuilders.ca. We have all kinds of really cool models on there at great prices with fast shipping to the United States and Canada. Alright Groovers, until next time, keep building. Now, I'm going to go give this to Godzilla. Hopefully she'll like this gift.